mad would you be if you and a friend both booked the same flight and you found out you paid more than your friend? Maybe it's not a big deal and you're not that surprised. Airlines have been doing this for decades. Maybe your friend is savvy about airfare booking and they know all the tricks. Clear your cookies, browse incognito, check the mobile app against the browser. But here's a new wrinkle. How mad would you be if you found out that the airline pegged you as someone who would pay more for the same ticket and charged you the higher price? Welcome to the world of personalized pricing. Companies know exactly how much we're willing to pay and they can deliver different prices to different customers. They do this by using profiles built from our online activities, where else we shop, travel, where we live, how much we make, whether we're married. If you make more and spend more, you might be served higher prices because the companies predict you won't be put off by paying more. In some ways, this is a throwback to how humans have always done business. Does this buyer look like someone who can pay a little more? This is called flexible or elastic pricing. In the old world of buying and selling, you and the merchant both had the same access to information about the other party. But in the new world of personalized pricing, the companies know a lot about you, and you often have no idea just how much they know. This feels unfair and downright creepy to a lot of us. We're more comfortable with fixed pricing. Everyone pays the number on the tag. But that idea is only 150 years old. The idea of having one fixed price for an item started with the Quakers, who believe that we're all equals as children of God. So why should the sharp negotiator get better deals than other people? Each person should pay the same price for the same item. But price tags didn't catch on because of their feel-good origin. For that, we can thank a more entrepreneurial young Quaker, Roland Hussey Macy. Macy, along with Alexander Stewart, was pioneering the big department store. Stewart's Marble Palace opened in 1846 and Macy's in 1858. Fixed pricing was the answer to let them scale way up. Haggling was time and labor intensive, it took a lot of specialized knowledge, and in a store with vast inventory and an army of clerks, it was way more efficient to give each item the same price. Now that algorithms can crunch all of the factors that a clerk used to have to do in their head, we're back to the world of flexible and even personalized pricing. In 2014, researchers from Northeastern University wanted to see how widespread this practice really is. They found that out of the 10 online retailers they tested, four had used personalized pricing, especially the travel sites. One of the companies that makes this pricing software is already working with 80 airlines from Southwest to Lufthansa, and they're predicting that 2018 is going to be a big year for them. In March 2018, Chuck Schumer got wind of this and wrote a letter to the FTC asking them to investigate whether personalized pricing violates the privacy of deeply personal consumer data. But the companies say they're just looking to add value for their customers. Personalization lets companies offer you deals on the things you actually want to buy. And some think this is a more fair way of doing business. Each person pays exactly what they're able to pay. Economists at Stanford and UC Berkeley did a study using a grocery chain as an example. If the stores in more affluent neighborhoods charged more, the stores in less well-off neighborhoods could charge less and the grocery chain would still be boosting its profits by as much as 7%. Companies know that customers might feel creeped out or unfairly targeted though, so the practice isn't widespread, yet. So what do you think? Are you freaked out just thinking about it? Or are you excited to get even better deals? Let us know what you think in the comments. Thanks for watching. Like, subscribe, and we'll see you next time.